today on Divorce Court. You know, Joseph feels like he's really smart and he can get away with things, but he doesn't know, like, I'm 10 times smarter than you, so, you know, that's why I call him a lying Leo. She's spoiled. She has to have things her way. Joseph will not let our kids see their grandmother, and that's my mom. If my partner doesn't change, then we'll have to come up with a solution to do this apart. It's not good for him just to walk out every time me and him get into an argument. I had to make an ultimatum, either you do this inpatient program, or, you know, I can get the kids back on my own and keep it moving. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be almost six months clean. I feel I can trust Janae. If I had to put it on a scale of one to 10, I'd say it's a six. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Janae Mixon and Joseph Brown. The two of you have been together for two and a half years. You have been engaged for the last year. You love each other, but you're not quite sure you can get it to work out. That's why you came to see me. You brought your marriage license, and you've given me permission to tear it up should I think your union is ill-advised. You've also filled out my compatibility test, and we will get to that momentarily. Before any of that occurs, Ms. Mixon, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about you and why you are concerned about the viability of this relationship? Well, Judge, um, my mom had me when she was 17. She, then she had me when she was 18. Mm -hmm. um, she, I gradu she graduated with me on her hip. Then I was raised by my grandma because my mom was into drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I moved out to Los Angeles with my mom when I was 14. Um, when I currently resigned out here with my mom, my mom ended up selling me to a pimp for $100. I started into the prostitution when I was 14 all the way to the time I was 19. So when I met Mr. Brown in February 2015, um, I wanted something different for my life. You know, I didn't want to do the prostitution, prostitution anymore. I really wanted something really different. We met through a mutual friend, through social media. You know, we were talking. We were really good friends. He asked me, can we start talking? I said, yes. Every Friday, he would send edible arrangements for me and my daughter. Send the money out here to make sure we were OK. Well done, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Well done. First of all, Ms. Mixon, before you say anything else, I am so glad you're here and standing and straight mm -hmm. and tall and getting it. I'm just so proud of you. You had every opportunity in the world to fall down and stay down, but you didn't. And I'm just impressed and happy to see you. I just want to let you know. Thank you. Um, he came out here after we started talking together. He came out here a few months later for his vacation. Um, we spent two weeks with each other, then he had to go back to work in Burlington, Vermont. Um, he went back to work. As soon as he got back, he said he wanted to move to L.A. to actually be with me. And we've been together ever since. Now, let me ask you, Mr. Brown, when did you find out her, about her past? During one of our conversations mm -hmm. on the phone, she was talking about one of her friends who had got murdered um, as she was working. It came up then. It came up then yeah. and all that. Now, a lot of guys, wrongly so, but we'd be put off by that. Why weren't you? Well, um, I was in a previous relationship before, um, and as she stated, you know what I'm saying, she wanted to change, I want to change too. Um, my previous relationship, it was just lies through our lies. Right. So uh, I moved to Vermont. You know, my sister was staying up there. She, uh, she told me I can come stay with her for a while, find me a job, which I did. But then all of a sudden, it got too cold in Vermont. All of a sudden, it got too cold in Vermont. <laughs> yeah, it was, I it, was, it, was, it was very freezing up there. Like, one day, we had to work in negative 35 to negative 50 degree weather. Yeah, no. So that was the point of me saying, you know, I, don't, I can't be in Vermont no more. You know. How much time elapsed between initially meeting and you being together? I want to say a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Yes, because. No only because I wanted something different. I was used to the bad life, and I wanted to try something different. Well, what about him was different? What did he say or what did he do that led you to believe he could give you different? Well, when I told him about my past, because that's what I did, I came out and told him about my past, because I'm the type of person, I don't like anybody coming to you telling you uh, anything about me. Right. Because ain't nobody can tell you nothing about me besides me. Gotcha. And. When I told him, he wasn't judgmental. And the first thing he said, I don't care about your past. I want to be in your future. Oh, Miss 
to ground. You're looking so good over there. I don't oh, even know oh. what to tell you. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I'm surprised it's not just sparkling on that side of the room. You know that? <laughs> not, not that you're not a reason to sparkle for, but you're looking good with it. Why are we here today? So far, I'm ready to be invited to the wedding. Okay. What's the problem? Um, you know, it's a couple of problems in our relationship that you know we feel like we need to work out. Um, for one, it's this one female I call East Coast Girl. He cannot let go of East Coast girl for nothing. We have a one-year-old son together. And every time she phone, talk, anything, it's how is our son or how is my son? You didn't spend 14 hours in labor care birthing that boy? Now, now hang on a second. At any point in time, are you aware that Mr. Brown and East Coast girl had a sexual relationship? He told me he hasn't, but I don't believe that because there is more than numerous occasions behind that. When I'm six months pregnant with our son, he's at work, he comes home, something tells me to get his phone. I get his phone, it's a lingerie picture of East Coast Girl. He tells me, oh no, it's for my coworker. If it's for your coworker, she should have sent the picture to his phone, not yours. Mr. Brown, why don't you tell us about the East Coast Girl? The situation out here when she was six months pregnant, it came to the point where I was on the phone with her, and it was some coworkers who asked who it was, and I explained to them who it was. They asked for a picture. So I asked her, would they send a picture? Would she send a picture? She sent the picture, but they, she didn't have their numbers to send the so picture to. So she sent the picture to she you? She sent the picture to me. I'm the type of person, I don't have nothing to hide, so That's why... That's a show and delete situation, if you Exactly, but you. it's a show and delete situation, but I'm the type of person, I don't have nothing to hide, so why delete something mm -hmm. if I'm not doing nothing with her, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't have nothing to hide, I'm not about to... Is that the most incriminating thing that happened with oh, East no. Coast Girl? Oh, no, no. We're, 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 we're going to take a second, I'm going to give you an opportunity, and then you're going to tell me what the most outrageous East Coast Girl story you got. I go in his phone, he's telling her, oh, I don't think this baby is mine, I have to wait till this baby is born. You know, I got his phone in his face like, um, you don't think whose child is yours? Mr. Brown, your, your version of those events. So what's the most incriminating story you have about the, the girl from the East Coast? Okay, I was eight months pregnant with our son. He's sleeping in the bed, I say it's around six o'clock in the morning. Once again, something tells me a woman's intermission, I get his phone. I go in his phone, he's telling her, oh, I don't think this baby is mine. I have to wait till this baby is born. So you know what I do? I go over there, wake him up, excuse me. Hello, can you wake up? You know, I got his phone in his face like, um, you don't think whose child is yours? Oh, what are you talking about? So I showed him, he tried to take it. No, don't take the phone. He's like, oh, well, you know, I just told her that because me and you got into an argument and I didn't want her to know the truth, so you rather lie to her and tell her that you think that our son is not yours. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I said, okay, since you want to lie, no, you are not allowed in no delivery room. No, you are not allowed to sign no birth certificate. No, you are not allowed to cut no umbilical cord until I get a DNA test. <laughs> He's, no, he didn't want to do it. Okay, you won't, be in no you won't be in the delivery room. Mr. Brown, your, your version of those events. When the conversation was given, like I said earlier, it was a relationship in the past that I went through for years of just lies. Right. Because of the lies came from her lying about being pregnant. All right. So I didn't know what to believe when, you know what I'm saying, she told me she was pregnant, this, that, and the other, you know. So I went ahead and thought what I wanted to think. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what was true or what was not true. I don't know if she was lying to me or if she wasn't. You know. So how did the East Coast girl get involved in your consternation over as to whether or not that baby was yours? Just somebody that, you know, I confided in, you know. It was like we were somebody to talk to. You right. Know? It wasn't like I could... It was... Can I give you my little 10 cents on free radical women? Mm-hmm. A free radical is a, is a kind of atom that has an extra electron out there and it goes attaching itself to things and people. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the habit of talking to a woman about how your relationship isn't working, 
opportunities pop up in their head. And you may not be getting the best advice because there's always an opportunity that maybe you and she. You know what I'm saying? It's not good business. It's not good practice. Doesn't make her a bad person, but it's not a smart decision on your part to talk with four out the women. What do you think is your, the major impediment to you two just waltzing down the aisle together? Um, she has friends as well. As one of them, he feels as if he can still say and do what he feels like he should well, do. What kind of things are, is he saying and doing that you oh, object to? We should be together. You should have my child. You should leave him, come up here and be with me, you know. Ms. Mixon, is that accurate? Yes, that is accurate, Judge, but I tell this man all the time, I am with somebody. I do not want you. I have never been in a relationship with this man. We have never touched, kissed, nothing. It's called a fatal attraction. He, a fa he likes me. I do not like him. Do you entertain any conversations with him? Yeah, I do, because simple fact, I, how I am, yes. If, he to, if he's going to entertain East Coast Girl, I might as well entertain him. Let, 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 let me tell you something. First of all, that is a very new age response to problems. Instead of just dealing with a problem in between, I'm going to go out, he's doing something, he could be doing something wrong, so I'm going to do something just as wrong. That, that's a recipe for disaster. That's number one, too. If he's a little junior stalker, you don't talk to him at all. It encourages them. He's a free radical. He'll attach to you if he gets the opportunity to do so. And especially if he doesn't know what the boundaries are, one day you're gonna look up, he's leering in your window or something. You don't want that happening. <laughs> All I'm saying is, that's a very dangerous game of tit for tat that you don't want to get involved in. And now that we've talked about this, we're gonna move on to your professions of love, your compatibility tests, and uh, other things that may be amiss. Janae and Joseph, I wanted to have an opportunity to speak with you in Chambers because I wanted you to know how special I think you are as a couple. I want you to know how special I think you are as a woman. And I hope you understand that I don't impress easy and I don't impress often, but I am impressed by you. Would you move across the country for someone you've been dating online? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. The one last thing, and this has to do with free radicals, you said, and I believe, Mr. Brown, you admit that East Coast Girl was calling the two of your babies hers. Yes. Um... What did you do about that, Mr. Brown? I set the record straight. You know, you shouldn't... She feels some type of way about you calling our son yours. So Why you should she do that? Can I ask? I guess it's uh I, I don't know. Let to me be tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you why she's doing it. She's claiming ownership of you. Yeah. And I know she's just your friend, no, but, but she's claiming some kind of ownership of you by insinuating herself into the one special thing you have with another woman. She's insinuating herself into that. There are things going on in the back of her mind that she has not expressed to you. You know what I'm saying? Have you cut her loose? Yes, ma'am. No, Your Honor. We have a two... We just had a newborn recently. She'll be two months on the 26th. Um, she was born six weeks early. You know, it was doing between me and his drugs addiction for marijuana and cocaine. Um, but as of today, you know, we're, we'll be six months clean next month on the 27th. Yes! Yes! Um, my oldest daughter comes home on the 31st of this month, and our son comes home next month on the 27th. Hallelujah! Um, both of us right now are currently in programs. You know, we do what we need to do as far as getting our kids back. Uh, we left that past uh, behind us, you know, the drugs behind us. So when, my when our daughter was born, she had to go in the NICU. So we, we can't bring phones, we can't bring anything in the hospital. So he's upstairs. I have to go downstairs to call the social worker to say that they're going to release our newborn to us because our newborn wasn't bo She was born with nothing in our system. So we got, we, to this day, we still get to keep our newborn. Right. So his phone is in the car. I go through his phone once again. June 3rd, he sits up in here and texts, inboxes her and says, oh, yeah, she's, he says, oh, you're not talking to me anymore? She said, what are you talking about? 
He was just like, oh, well, we just had little man's birthday. Oh, how is my son? Oh, he ran, he got me tired, ran around um, at his birthday par party. But prior to, before that, he just told me that he texted her and told her, oh, well, since you can't respect me and Janae's relationship, there's no reason for me and you to talk. Oh, I'm just going to sit here and block you. And he called me and told me he said that. But you're still inboxing her. You're still talking to her. Can, can I just, I want to stop. And I want to talk to the two of you. Because I like me some mixing brown. I really do. It's like a country. We're going to build us a new separate country, the country of mixing brown. You the king, you the empress. <laughs> and we're going to talk about how you can build your kingdom and your empire without some free radical concerns. So I'm going to adjourn this court, and we're going to reconvene in my chambers. What past history of a partner would be most difficult to cope with? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Janae and Joseph, I wanted to have an opportunity to speak with you in chambers because I wanted you to know how special I think you are as a couple. I want you to know how special I think you are as a woman. Uh, no one handed you anything. You fought and scratched for every piece of peace and honor and life that you have, and I really respect that. And I hope you understand that I don't impress easy and I don't impress often, but I am impressed by you. I want you to take that in and feel it and know it and, and have this image of me telling you that all the time so you can really know how fabulous you are and how difficult what you did it. And, and Joseph, you picked a great woman and you were a great dude. You know how to love her, you know how to take care of her. And she's gonna have issues that will continue because she's had a lot to work through. But what I want you to do is build the country mixing brown. Instead of going to the free radicals, whenever there is a pain or a concern, you come to one another. And you come to one another with a game plan. Reach out that hand, my man. Baby, I got this concern. And then you say what it is. And then you say, I, this is what I heard you just tell me. Is that right? So you can hear and feel one another. And there should be a place in your house that is just a spot where you two hold your hands and speak truth to one another. But never speak any word about either one of you outside of that house before you've spoken it to one another. You, you with me? Because you have to honor what you've done. You have to honor what you've been through. You have to honor who he is and who you are. And you have to honor all that work you did for yourself to become the woman that you are today. And I want you to promise me, and I mean promise me, you will take your issues to one another before you speak word one. And when I say speak word one, I mean Facebook, I mean all kinds of social media, letters, text. I don't want none of that to happen. I don't want that world inside the country mixing brown. That's your country. I think the world is yours. I think your children are lucky. I think you are lucky to have one another, and I want you to believe that and remember that. And I just wanted you to know how much I honor who you are and what you've done, and I think you should get married. Don't have a big wedding, have a small one. Mm -hmm. Only four people showed up at mine. Had that brother 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Small wedding, save your money, because you said something really good about money. It said I was sending her money so we would have something to start our life off with. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. no, no fingernails, nothing. You with me? Yep. God bless you both. You're fantastic. I just love you. Thank you. I wish you the best. And I want pictures of the wedding. Thank you, honey. <laughs>